Valley Brook an inmate at Kentucky State Penitentiary, a Kentucky Correctional Institute. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. To repeat, thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. The most important thing that I've learned so far um, is, is the fact that I need to accept responsibility for who I am and my decision. You know, uh, nobody's at fault, regardless of what my reasoning was when I killed this man. Mm-hmm. It was wrong, period. And I, I can make up all kinds of excuses, uh, well, he did this, so I had to do this. And that's all that is, they're excuses. You know, what I did, I made, I made a decision, it was wrong, it is just that simple. And venerable Romina is a key to why I can sit back and I can look at it that way. When, when I first started studying with Venerable Romina, um, she introduced me to a set of, I guess, values and, you know, and a way of thinking that has helped me in here more than any other thing I've ever studied. And, well, that she has given me the ability to see not just my side about, oh, poor me, poor me, poor me, but to, when a guy comes to me that's had a bad day or he's bad and I'm faced with his attitude, I can step back from it without reacting to it and say, okay, Something may have happened to this man. Uh, we've been here before. If you're looking at it from a karmic perspective, and I've done the same to him, mm-hmm. but it's given me the ability. I act instead of react. How particularly has Venerable Bina been a guide for you or a support for you? That's exactly what she's been a, a guide. Uh, she listened to me all these years. I answered letters. Uh, answered my questions, um, taken the answers that she's given me to my questions and pointed me in directions of likely avenues of study or recommended or sent books and stuff that, you know, because of, I guess, it would say her greater experience with Buddhism and just life in general, she's been able to look at the problems I'm having and say, okay, this would help you. Yeah, I definitely have a better reign on it. Like I said, I've been, I've been able, because my hands and feet are what got me in here. Okay. I did no guns, I didn't run somebody over, I didn't, okay. And I, I count my blessings for this every day. I've done my whole time so far in this maximum security penitentiary. I have never had a single fight. An old convict saying that I heard many, many years ago, there's two ways to do time. You can either do the time or the time can do you. I do my time. I am constantly occupied. I'm constantly looking for ways to occupy my mind. When I went to, to, to myself, I could sit down in there and I could put my entire focus on what I was doing. Uh, I wasn't worried about what this guy over here was doing or what that guy was over there doing. Or, do I have to worry about these people approaching me, you know, with some stupid stuff when I go to the hill? Because of the fact that I'm doing my time, you know, I'm not letting other people dictate to me about how I'm going to do it or anything like that because I've avoided all that stuff. And that's directly responsible, you know, responsible from the teaching that I received from her to be able to leave all that stuff behind and be able to apply the focus that I needed. Another thing I used to obsess over, uh, as I told you, you know, I am guilty. I actually made a bad decision. Right. Okay. But I was really focused on, oh man, I'm doing 25 flat years on life. Okay, which means I have to do 25 calendar years on a life sentence. Oh, what, I'm not constantly worried about 
what's the parole board going to do to me? What, you know, how is this going to affect my life? Now, I, I, I still think about those things, but I don't worry about them. I recognize that, okay, this is an issue. What can I do to either improve that situation or issue as far as with the parole board? You know, and I'm looking at it in a constructive thing instead of something that's eating at my mind. Right. You know, I'm using, I guess you would call it the old word about that, just my motivation to do the things I need to do or that I can't do and not worry about the rest of it. You know, uh, if I go up, I go up to 2018, if they give me parole, I'm going to be thankful for it. You know, I'll be the first to admit that. But at the same time, if they serve me out, then I'm hoping my mindset doesn't change between now and then. But if they were to serve me out, the way I'm thinking now, okay, this is just the consequence of what I did. And, you know, there's no, it's not anybody else's fault. It's, you know, this is specifically my doings, you know. Um, I'm a lot more, I don't know what the correct term would be for it. Uh, I guess accepting. Turn on what's talk to, you know, if I was to ever make parole, I, I think the, the, the greatest thing I could ever do would be to find one of our, you know, our facilities who can make use of the skills that I have and just work for FPMT in whatever capacity. I would care if they wanted me to just drive her around. I could be her chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, and I, anything that I could do to, to, to return even a portion of what she has given to me in whatever way that I can, you know, to me would be the, the, the greatest thing I could ever do. Mm. You know, I mean, if I can do that by, I, you know, anything that I could do, I mean, to me, I mean, it would be, it, it, would be worth it because of what she has and her teachings have given to me, you know, in relation to doing this time. Well, there's no question in my mind that without meeting her, my life in here, if I was still living, would have been radically different.